Hello everyone, this is Christina from Christina's Art Corner. I'm coming to you today with a flip through of this book here. It's called A Four Season Landscape Coloring Book and it is by the author Ko Eun Joon and she is the one who has illustrated these two books here as well. Which color do you like? And if you recall, we did a page in here, this one, this one here, here's her image and here's mine. So we've done one of those and then also here recently we used this book and this is Beautiful Scenery in Europe and this is also illustrated by Ko Eun Joon, okay? And in this one, we did this page. That was on January 11th. So I really enjoy her books. In fact, if I were to tell you I wanted to complete any books, they would probably be these that I'm showing you. I'm just really enjoying doing um, her watercolor books. Now this book, she does more colored pencil. But I've watched many of her videos and she does an underlayer of watercolor and then pencil over. But we'll go through the book and I'll flip through first. And here you can find her, it's Starland underscore art. Here it says Starland drawing. And there's uh, QR codes. So she has a prologue in here. And then you have your four seasons, and those are the pictures that are in here. Also in the back, it shows her books. There's a Q&A in here if you wanted to. Now I use Photo Translator, the app, on my phone for these. Um, I just don't write them all out in the book. Um, but she's showing you here. She has pencils, right? She always uses a glove too, pretty much, when she uses pencils. And then there's erasers, pencil extenders, and a brush, and another sharpener. So she's explaining all those. <clears throat> and then she's showing you the marks that she makes. And then here you start to have gradients where you can practice, which is really nice. And then your color wheel. And then we start out basic here. So there's a rock and some grass to do. And she's got some of the uh, markings on here, but you can make the markings on here. And then we have some tree bark, stones, and then some sky with clouds. Again, teaching you the gradient. And then we start our images. So we have a nice tree, another nice tree, beautiful flowers on this one. And then in spring, you get these little uh, Polaroid cards and she's showing you the colors to use down here at the bottom in the circles. Again, you have QR codes here. And here's where you can do yours. And then here are some spring pictures. Very beautiful. It's a nice one with fence and foil, foliage. <laughs> I was going to say foil. Foli foliage. <laughs> oh, beautiful scenery with a sailboat and a powerboat. And then we have a landscape picture here. Here's another landscape picture. Again, the colors that you're to use. And here's one with a pretty turquoise door with a blue overhang and some stonework. Potted plants. Beautiful tree with flowers. And then this beautiful windmill plate page. Again, all the colors that she's used. And then we get to summer. And there's here another uh, 
Polaroid. I love this one where you look through the stone to see. I'm a sucker for sailboats. I watch a lot of sailing YouTube channels. Beautiful scenery here. You put in your own water and sand line at the bottom and sky. And she's taught you how to do the sky and clouds in the beginning. Here are some be beautiful buildings. Another sailboat. And a lighthouse. Gorgeous. Very pretty lighthouse. Look at that sky. Another pretty scene here with some water and some trees. And then we have this cute little cottage on the water. And there is the to be colored image. And then we get to autumn. You have your Polaroid here with your colors. Gorgeous landscapes. And here's one here. I have a beautiful stone wall. Look at this one with all the fall colors. And we have here a nice stream with the water coming down. Here we have a nice train. We have some birch trees. Now we're into winter. There's our winter Polaroid. It's a beautiful scene. Have a nice red barn. Have a really pretty bird. And some berries with snow on top. And then here you have some of the images without the examples. And then here she gives you a bunch of landscape photos. Look how beautiful those are. And then she's saying here to do your own from these. Mimic one of these landscapes in here. And then you have an opportunity to do another one. So I figured we wouldn't just do a flip through. Why don't we go ahead and at least start one of these. I'm very tempted to do the lighthouse with all these varying colors here. I love them all. I really do like this one too. Hmm. This one shows less colors, but I think in order to get that area there, that will take quite a bit of blending. Let's see here. Well, let's just go ahead and go for the lighthouse. Go big or go home, okay? That's how we do things here. Okay. I am going to go ahead and use some washi tape. So I have my Rosa Gallery watercolors here. So here's the Rosa Gallery watercolors. I use these for one of those pages over there. I have a few brushes here. I have a Princeton Velvet Touch number four round. I also have a six, number six Blick and the Golden Taclon. And then I have a Grabby number three. So I, I'm going to do a little bit of base with the watercolor and then I figured we would use Artex pencils figured quite a few of you probably have those pencils. I've 
<clears throat> got quite a few of my Prismacolors out on another page, so that's why I'm not doing Prismacolor. Let me go ahead and wet some of these. I want to do my yellows. <clears throat> I can do the orange. And let's see what other colors we have here. I'm definitely going to do the yellow ochre. And then we have our greens. Purple. Violet. And olive green. Green. Emerald green. And then we have cobalt blue. Blue. And an ultramarine. And then for down here, I'm thinking we might use the sepia. Maybe for the stone, we have a neutral black or natural, neutral, neutral black. Um, and also an umber. And burnt sienna and English red. We'll just, we'll just let those be the ones that we do for now. <clears throat> Excuse me. My allergies always get me in the morning, so I apologize if I have to clear my throat. So I'm noticing here, right in this stripe, that we have some yellow and orangey umber tones. So I'm actually going to go in with a yellow. Let me get my water. Here. Just gonna do a little a little underpainting here and then we will do colored pencil. So it's kind of light in here. I'm just doing this by eye. I want to have a page underneath here. And then we'll do a little bit of this orange. Now this isn't the paper that she has in the other books. So I will need to be a little careful not to put too much water on there. Um, and then we have some down here. I'm going to do a little umber. And then we'll do the rest with pencil. And for the stones, okay, we're just going to hit the stones here a little bit. We also do have some, like a second layer of light kind of running through here and then here. All right, let me get the rest of these rocks. Uh, 
And then we have these little grassy areas. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna go in here. It's showing some grass here. And then right underneath these trees. And I'm just going to do a little dotting pattern in here. All right. Now we have a little bit of yellow inside a lighthouse. And also in here. And I'll leave the center alone because there's a lighter cream color in there. And then I'm going to take this English red and I'm going to put a little bit of that here. Oops, it should have gone here. Well, we'll just have to cover that. Okay, and then about the only other thing I think I want to do is this red roof. Just give it an under layer. I know that's more pink, but we'll go with it for now. Okay, and then Maybe the last thing I might want to do is just give some blue here. And then there's a little bit of purple. And then I think I want to do all of that with pencil. Okay, so we have just a little rough underlayer of watercolor. I'm going to let this dry, and then we'll come back and do the, the colored pencil, and I'm going to leave this on here so I can bring the colored pencil all the way to the edge. Okay, it's pencil time. So here is my Artex 126 Pencils Color Family Chart, and I download these from Color with Claire's Ko-Fi. And... Here's my pencil case. So 
So let's go ahead and see where we want to start. So I think I'll start here down at the bottom and get this ground going. So I'm going to go to my browns and start with Sienna Brown, which is over here. And I'm also going to use the golden rod right before it. And I'm, she's got lines going this way and this way. So I'm going to try to mimic hers as much as I can. I'm first going to start out going this way. And I know there are some places here where she's got some lighter values. Bring that up into here, up against the rocks. And I'm probably just going to go ahead and use these strokes following what's already on the page. It's got some lighter areas here. All right, and then we have some darkness up right against these rocks. So a little bit of shadow underneath all of them. Okay. And then just with a lighter hand, I'm going to start creating some strokes here. I'm going to tone down this yellow here. Again, I'm, fo I'm following her initial markings and on the paper, and then I'm going to follow what she's got on here afterward. Okay, so I'm going to have to go into the Iron Oxide Brown. And start here, giving some little darker areas. And from here, we've got marks coming this way. Let 
Now I need to do an orange. I'm gonna take the the yellow ochre orange and go under here. Some areas in here as well. This is voiceover Christina. I just wanted to uh, give you a little update on what I'm doing since I decided to time lapse this portion of the video. I've gone through and laid down several colors and then used a uh, Caran d'Ache full blender. When I started out with the watercolors, I went a little dark on the yellow. And so when I'm going over with the orange, it's creating uh, too much of an orange. So I'm just, I'm having to go in and darken that up a little bit. And then I wound up using the poppy red in the Artex in order to kind of flush out some of the yellow uh, to get more... To get closer to where she was at with her page, I started using scissors because she has like white markings in her illustration. And although I'm sure she did not use this method, this is what I figured out to do. I used a, re a uh, an eraser, a regular rubber eraser, and then I went with the blender. The full blender again and went over this area now I'm realizing that I'm eating up quite a bit of the tooth by doing this process but I'm having to and one of the reasons I'm doing the voiceover is because I realized at a certain point that I wasn't naming the pencils I wasn't talking to you anymore and that's just that sometimes happens to me when I'm getting involved and in trying to figure out what I'm gonna do uh, in a page and so that is basically what you're uh, seeing there and I went off to something different to the lighthouse to kind of give that bottom a break uh, but actually using the scissors did create the white marks uh, as uh, looks like on her illustration she probably had a little tooth left in hers which is why she was able to create the white again this is all experimentation until you actually you know learn the book 
Um, Artex, I have been using them uh, more lately, but normally I would choose Prismacolor just for the smushing uh, um, ability for something like this. And in hind hindsight, I tell you in my outro later on um, that I should have just done colored pencils from the beginning, but I like to experiment, so that is why you got what you got there. So I do have a lighter version of her bottom half, uh, the lower quarter of the page. And then I'm just pulling out different pencils to start the uh, water and then the sky. You can see all that wax build up on the bottom of the page. <laughs> uh, yeah, here is some greenery. So I'm just going in with some of my greens and I pull out a Prismacolor uh, white a few times too, just to uh, kind of mute some of the colors. So moving on to there and then the trees. And then there's a yellow patch right above that water line. Uh, so that's where I started with the sunset. And then I'm just going to go back and forth with um, my yellows, my pinks, my blues, my purples, my oranges, and just try to get as close to her, her illustration as I can. Um, I am a bit of a perfectionist, if you haven't noticed on my channel. <laughs> but one thing that you learn in coloring is that you've got to let that go sometimes. And I think that's why I stopped talking and letting you know exactly which colors that I was using at the time. Because it was difficult for me to go ahead and lay out what I wanted to do as I was doing it and speak about it too at the time. So, but I have, I wind up pulling multiple colors of blue because the top of the page is darker. There's darker hues of blue and I wind up having a little more yellow in mine. She has probably more pink and orange on the left side of the lighthouse. Um, I used my electric eraser a couple of times uh, just because I didn't like how it was going. And up here you see I'm using the uh, full blender to try to blend out some of those and try to layer uh, the pencils on there. So yeah, I, I think that pretty much all the instruction I need to give you, I'm just going to let you see the rest of the video, and then I'll close it out with my real voice, not my voiceover voice. Bye for now!
Okay, we're finally done. Two, two hours. So I will have time lapse this for you. Let's go ahead and take, let me just heat up the washi before I take it off so it doesn't rip. You right back. Okay, so let's take the tape off. Gotta heat it up some more. I don't want to tear it. Okay, here we are. So, final thoughts. I think I did pretty good. Is it my best out of her books? I would say probably not. Um, in fact, actually, let me just fix something that I see. I don't know how that got taken off. Maybe by the, the heat. Um, because it's bigger scale, I, you know, wrestled a little, little bit and then I figured out I can't, I'm not going to make it exact. I'm going to do as close as I can and just kind of use, use my head instead of just like the copy, you know, side of your brain where you laying down the colors. I just decided to kind of then go with my own thought process. So I think it turned out all right. Because you'll see down here through the time lapse, I took my scissors to get scratch marks. Because look, she has scratch marks in hers, right? Um, and I have more like purple over here than she did. That's okay, I like it that way. <laughs> but um, the rocks are pretty close, I'd say. Um, on the building here, I had accidentally put some watercolor down here so I had to cover that up so it's a little a slightly different color than um, hers uh, but overall I think it was fun I think if I were to do it over I would strictly do the pencils and not bother with the watercolor in this book I'm so used to doing watercolors in her book and a watercolor uh, under layer was something I thought I could do in this book but the paper is not it's thick but it's not as thick as these books. I just want to feel the paper. Yeah, the paper is different. So it's meant for colored pencils. I went ahead and did my own thing, but um, I think even having done that, I got pretty close. All of this blending was, was a lot to do with all the different colors. She does have some green in her sky, so I wasn't too worried about having some in mine. Uh, but yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. I'm going to give myself a B. <laughs> so I hope you liked this flip through, uh, time lapse, and my first page uh, done on this book. I was flipping some pencils. I, <laughs> I broke my full blender, both that tip and this tip. Um, so yeah, all kinds of fun things happened, but you know, at the end of the day, really, the result and whether you like it or not is what's important. Let me get some of the light off of there so you can see. And my yellow is a little darker than hers. I could go over more of it with Prisma to lighten it. Um, we'll just do that real quick. And you, you saw me using the Prisma anyway. I did some of that already. I think most importantly, just have fun. No matter what book you're in, just have fun. So yeah, it's slightly lighter. Um, but yeah, I love lighthouses. I think this one turned out uh, well. I did a few different techniques. I have never taken a scissor to my page to create scratch marks, um, but I sure did on this one. And uh, overall, I could pro probably have done more here. Uh, but I just didn't want to mess with it. And then you saw the last thing I did was Posca for the water splashing up on the rocks. So yeah, after that long-winded explanation, uh, I think this book is a great book to get if you want to practice your coloring skills and have a bunch of lovely pages 
to do it in. I will do a few others in here. Strictly colored pencils using different colored pencils uh, to see how they all do. Uh, I find a little more variety in the Prismacolors than the Artex just from my own um, perception. Um, but I'd like to do some different colored pencils in here and see, see how they do. So let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, the good, bad, but please no ugly. And uh, most of you never do do that. But uh, be sure to give me a like. It sure does help uh, the algorithm for people to see my videos and to come to my channel. So I will see you all in the next video. I hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye now. Happy coloring.